want everybody to look at me, that's it, all right? I'm like, hello. Now, as I'm here with her, I feel everybody eyes on me because this is what you'll feel when you're out there. So basically, as you guys know, I talk about awareness all the time, don't I? Sure. Yeah. So who in here actually meditates? Okay. You too, this will be a very new experience for you because that's the base at which I work. And that's the base at which we all come from when we want to be who we are. Everyone open your eyes. If your eyes are not open, open them. Remain in that place. And when you're ready, I want you to look at me directly in my eyes because this is one way you're going to learn to center yourself and stay with yourself as you're with someone else. And the more you learn to stay with yourself as you're with somebody, the more you can be able to just go, hi, my name is Anthony. And not feel like you're saying to somebody, so hi, my name is, that's away from yourself. That's nervously reacting. That's because your awareness moves up in your body. The core of you is right in the center here, in the center though, not at the front, but in the center. And it requires conscious effort. It does. This is all about, this first session is all about you asking questions that is deeper than just women. This is about you. It could be in relation to women, but this is mainly about you. Something you struggle with, specifically. And this is a space where no judgment will come up on you. Because everybody in here has went through pain. Who knows what it's like to go through pain? Yes. Everybody has went through pain. This is not a space where we're trying to be tough, we're trying to make it seem like, you know, I'll ask this question, but I can, you know, be tough as I do it. If you're asking a question like that, I will pinpoint it very quickly. And I'll go, ask me the question you really want to ask me. Or I'll just say, all right, we got to go deeper in that because that's not really what it is. She leaves. Okay, I got I to stop you because you're going too far. Okay. All right, I need for you to uh, ask the question now because you've went through all that, but what's the thing that you really feel like, okay, is it that I can express myself? You, now you have to just become clear with it. So what is it that you want as a question? Like, what's the question you have? I can't fully express myself. I want to figure out how to fully express myself to her. Mm. Regardless of what she says or thinks or what anybody else around me thinks. And lead it to whatever point I want to. Whether I want to get her number, whether I just want to say you're, you're cute, you're beautiful, and then leave. Mm. Or ask the direction or whatever. But just express what I want and then get out or get whatever. Okay. Without worrying about rejection or whatever. Okay. So are you worried about rejection when you're there? No. Uh, when you're in that situation, my question is, what are you actually worried about? Good question. Not fully being me and not fully being satisfied with what I did or what I could have done. Do you have a track of feeling like no matter what you do, you're not really satisfied? Not all the time. But I'm saying in relation to expressing yourself. Yes. Sometimes I feel like I say the wrong thing. Sometimes I feel like I do too much. Sometimes, sometimes I feel like I do too little. Are you a perfectionist? I wouldn't say that, but I'm hard on myself. You are hard on yourself? Yes. Because you feel like you have to be what? Perfect. Because I wasn't before. Yeah. So you're trying to run away from who you used to be. Because I feel like no matter how I try, it's, too, it's not enough. I'm not, it's too late for me. I should have had this figured out when I was in high school, you know, when I was shy. When I seen other dudes I, I wasn't friends with, I was cool with. All of a sudden, you'll just have girls come to them, sleep with them. I'm in college and, you know, I got to uh, stop you there, okay? Yep, it's fine. Who in here is above 25? 
who feel like I should have had this handled. Yeah. Why do you? The, my question is because this is that's not, not not only for you. This relates to people. Sure. It does. Why do you guys feel like you should have had it handled though? That's my question. Just things. Throw okay. things out to me. Just well, things. Comparison to other people. Exactly. Like, see other people my age getting married and having kids and stuff. Mm. You know, I think it's like frowned upon by society to be seen as somebody who's learning how to be good with women. Yeah. So like you judge yourself. Like even when we were in the subway the other day and you were like, t you were just very loudly talking to me about like fucking a girl or like taking her home, and I'm just like, <laughs> 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 yeah. like, but but if that was like accepted, you know. I think it's also magnified in America, like because of the, like, it's very, especially yeah. the city is like very feminist. But um, so yeah. So oh, okay, yeah. I, I was um, thinking, is he trying to say? Um, this is what I sometimes think. Sometimes uh, I was wondering if you were thinking that um, that you're not um, like masculine if you're not already handled if you already handled it. Uh, I don't know if I, if I said it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like, like essentially, like, you're not, like, fully, like, a developed man if you, like, are, like, totally confident all the time and, like, know what you're doing. Okay. Like, yeah. I was going to say, that's how I, yeah. when you said that, I was like, oh, yeah, I remember I thought about it before, but yeah. Basically, we are pressed upon that we have to have had this embedded in us, and if we don't, there's something wrong with us. That's really the way society makes it seem. It seems, it makes it seem like, you know what? If you weren't born as the guy who was amazing with women, I mean, he's the one that go up to every girl and he's just like, hi, and she's like, oh, like that. <laughs> if, if you weren't that, then you weren't, there's something wrong with you. That's really the way that it makes it seem like. And the truth is, is that even the guys who are great with women and didn't learn anything about this, they learn somehow. So don't think that they was just like, uh, they bless with it and they just walk up to women from like middle school and was like, hey, what's up? Like they, they weren't like that. They learned somehow. It was somebody in their life that taught them or they saw references that this is, this is okay, that this can be done. And how do I know this? Me. I don't know if you guys know this, but I have been, I started this shit when I was really, really young. It's not that you, has, you, were, you were supposed to have had it. That's not the thing. That's not the issue in this. The issue is that you feel like it's too late. Yeah. So, because anybody could be like, man, I should have been great at this. I should have been great at this. That's from the position of it's too late. And any of you guys who are working from the position of it's too late, this is not true. It's simply not. And how is it not true? It's because you're still here. You know when it's too late? When you're not here. So no need to look in the past and go, I should have got all this done. My lovely friend back here. Yeah, see, he used to have thoughts like that, like so much time was wasted. And one of the things that, you know, I was helping him understand is that, no, of course all that time is, is not there anymore. You'll never get it back. And that's the truth you need to sit in yourself. It's like, I will never get that time back that I feel like I should have had this. You never will. But that's great because now... Your next, how old are you? 23. Your next 23 will be different. That's what you need to look at. Not the first 23, because if you look at that, it's going to discourage you. You need to look at the next 23. Because the next 23 years will be very different than the first 23. But it's up to you, though. So the feeling of, I just can't express myself, all that is not, it's, that's happening. But what's underneath that is that it's too late. So that's the thing that's really bubbling underneath the surface is that this too late and you feel like you should be perfect when you walk up to the girl because you like kind of miss your time. All right. Anytime you feel yourself veering back to that, anytime you feel your mind veering back to that, it's an indicator for you to focus on what's happening now and my want for things to be different for me. It's, shiftly, it's simply a shift in focus. Once you shift your focus like that, what happens is, is now things will start to unfold for you in a different way. It won't be unfolding like, fuck, I missed all this. It'll be unfolding like, what's ahead of me? Um, firstly, uh, I think it's pretty crazy that I'm finally like, finally got to see you in person. Because I 
Yeah. <laughs> hey, this is Tony Solo for the, for the like, you that? Hey, what's up guys? This is Tony Solo. Like, every video I'm like, what's up guys? This is Tony Solo. You see me walking like this. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I dated a girl for eight months and um, she was honestly the best woman, the best girl that I've played with ever. And you said it at 18. That's, that's lovely. That's lovely. Man. Yeah, that's lovely. Everyone says that. But, yeah. Um, I broke up with her because I was going to college and I knew that I have to meet more women. I have to explore new things. Mm -hmm. But ever since I broke up with her, I've been feeling depressed and down. And I want her back even though I know that my journey is seduction. And it's really difficult for me to get through this. And I don't think that. Like, I've been through heartache before. I've gotten through it before. When you say, I want her back, what's happening is, bro, because you feel depressed. Is that what it is? And what did she, what, what is the feeling that she gave you that you would like back? Because it's not the woman, because every woman is replaceable. What's the feeling that she gave you that you want back so much? So you want warmth. Warmth feels good to you. Yeah. Do you feel like another woman can give you warmth? That's my question. I know another woman can. Don't say but. I know you're going to say but. Don't say it. All right? All right? Do you feel like a woman, another woman can give you warmth? My question is, why do you feel like no woman can give you warmth like her? So I was born and raised in the city, so I'm used to like the culture of the city. But now that I'm in Stony Brook, it's in the middle of Long Island. It's, like, it's, a, very, uh, it's a big school, but the, they're not New York City girls can't approach them and be direct per se. You need a lot of subtlety. I, I know you made a video about like small towns. Small, small city towns, seduction, but, yeah. But I, or, or you um, go to parties, and but I don't really have much night game. All my experience with day game. Really? So I feel lost at Stony Brook too. Okay. So only when I return to the city do I approach and feel more comfortable. Do you actually feel like there is is a more of a chance when you come back to the city for you to meet somebody else? Yeah, that's because, so where you're at right now, the girl that you were in love with, was she, would, is she living where you're at now? Uh, she's in Binghamton, so upstate. But, but you're in a small place, am I, am I right? Yeah. And there's not a lot of girls around you? Yeah. Okay, one of the reasons why for this as well is just simply the fact that there's not enough around you. And the way that it's manifesting is there's not enough, and the only thing you can do is think about the last girl. This is usually what happens though. So we go into a place and you see like, okay, this is not New York City. This is a smaller city. And then I don't have enough girls to approach. The fact that I don't have enough girls to approach, that means that I have more time to think about women. And the strongest thing that's gonna come up in relation to women is the feeling that you feel inside of you. And for you right now currently, it's a lot of pain related to your last girl. So she's going to continuously loop around in your head because it's not enough, enough women for you to go talk to to be able to find out that I can have warmth with another girl. So it's just a reoccurring thing simply because of the amount of choice you have around you. First of all, stop calling it depression. That's not what it is. Do you know, do you know that the words that we say to ourselves, they have a lot of more emotions attached to it than we actually feel? It's like when we say rejection. What's all the things attached to it? I'm not good enough. Uh, I need to be more. It's all these different things that's attached to this one word, rejection. So what about uh, depression? I feel depressed. Then you start going through the feelings of what depression is. So the first thing for you to do is stop calling it depression. Where in your body, because remember all this stems from inside of you, where in your body do you actually feel sadness? I feel like my mind is tearing me. It's more like getting away from my head. Because like in my head, I, this is where I keep thinking about her. It's where it keeps reminding me of her. It keeps getting me um, sad. It's like I, I try to get away from it. It's, it's, it's not the thinking of her that's making you sad. It's what you think about when you think of her that's making you sad.
It's not her, because you loved her. She didn't make you sad. It's what you're thinking about. You're probably continuously thinking about the breakup. That's what you're thinking about, am I right? Yeah, the breakup is making you sad, not her. And it's not just simply by saying move on. What is moving on? Except that it's over and you feel as you move forward. How, does, how would that play out for you, though? Like, um, realistically. Realistically, yeah, because you say, you can say all these things, but they don't mean anything when you leave this room. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with you guys having exes and be like, oh, she was great. Like, it's like, people make it seem like if you have an ex, you just got to be like, fuck them, and then walk or something. <laughs> no, you don't, you, don't, you don't need to do that. You simply don't. Every, the girls that I've had in my life, I mean, especially when I, had, when I had when I was younger, fucking just, she tore me apart, really. But I still don't think back on her like, fuck, she was so fucking horrible to me. No, she showed me parts of me that I need to work on and parts of me that was wonderful. She did. What? That's a great woman. And if, to be honest with you, every woman you're with is a great woman. She is. Because she'll show you the great parts of you and the bad parts. Because her, re, her reactions to you reflect your bad parts. And her reactions to you reflect your good parts. So never look back on her like she was a bitch. or Because many guys like to do this. Or like, oh man, I need to get over her. I'm like, no. Don't think about, let's get over her. No, just think about, that woman was great. She showed me that I always feel instability. Her reaction is leaving me. That's due to my feeling of instability on the inside. She always feel that she needs to go to somebody else because I'm not, I, in some way that makes me feel like I'm not good enough because that's the result of that. That's not the truth, but that's the, that's the feeling you have on the inside. I'm like, yeah, she made me feel that. But now my journey is to, is to come into what feels good for me. You. Yes, my issue stems from my masculine, feminine polarities, I feel. Um, and I only just realized recently. Um, the, my main question is, what can I consciously do to kind of revitalize my masculine energy? Because what happens a lot is I'll be able to approach women be able to like have great conversation and the not so extreme cases they'll play which I play with now but the more extreme cases is they'll just want to be my friends hmm. or I'll have a relation with them and I've had it to the point where girls explicitly told me like you're not being man enough right now you're not being a man and that has hurt me before of course it does and now like I'm comfortable with accepting that but I didn't realize what it was until now, and it's just that I, my feminine energy is off the roof for me, I feel. Oh, okay. Anybody, have, everybody has felt this feeling of, okay, I'm not masculine enough. Everybody has felt that, really. And if you're not feeling that, then you are somebody who is the pseudo-masculine. Because you must walk through life in understanding awareness of what is the masculine. So, first of all, one of the things I can probably notice that it is, is simply uh, the intensity that, that's coming from you. You probably are not intense enough when you're around women. So you're probably always being very gentle and very light and very sweet and soft, but they don't feel the part of you that's intense. Stop moving your head. Just stay with me. Did you feel your breath become full? Yes. When you're in front of a woman, stop shying away from the fact that you want to have sex with this woman. Don't shy away from it. When you look at her in the eyes, hold her eyes. As if, I don't know who you are, but I want to know because I want you. And your body will want to do many things when you're doing this with a woman. It will want to go like, all this will want to happen. Because a woman may feel like, why are you looking at me like that? You need women to start doing that to you. You need it. The reason why is because you're not used to making a woman feel uncomfortable. A woman needs to feel a mix between uncomfortable and comfortable if she really wants to feel excited about you. If she's only feeling the flat line of comfortable around you, you become a friend. She needs to feel the uncomfortableness of this guy is projecting something to me and she needs to feel something. Not uncomfortable of that's a creep. Not like that uncomfortable. I'm talking about uncomfortable as you're in front of the woman. 
and you're showing her that I want you, or you're showing her in this moment that I'm interested in you, and I'm not trying to shy away from it. And as you're there with her, she'll start to feel something different about you. Can you say that when you're in front of a woman, she's always feeling gentle and, and, and soft and safe? Yeah. All right. Never lose that part. But you must balance that out with showing her that I want you. Because to every, anything too one-sided, the woman will feel like this is off. Too much of I want you, you're, you're uh, sexy to me, um, who are you? And she feels like, uh, I'm, this is too much. I feel like you would be too intense for me. Too much of, you. oh, this is fine. Oh, yeah, so what do you do? Oh, too much of that is, oh, this is a great friend. But the balance of both sides is, he makes me feel safe and unsafe. He makes me feel comfortable and uncomfortable. He makes me feel like he is empathetic, but at the same time, he's willing to show me that he wants this. You know, for me, I naturally do that simply because I am interested in getting to know the girl deeper. If she gives me a response that's not good enough, I actually don't have anything to say about it. I don't. So when you connect to, in the moment, what's actually true for you, you'll actually start naturally playing these things out. So the girl goes, you go to her, you say, you know, you're talking to her, and she goes, well, you know, I, I'm just going to do something so New york -y. okay? I, okay, I'm a fashion model and I also do, uh, I plan events on the weekend. Let's say she says something like that. And then you go, oh, so this planning events thing, um, is this something that you would say you're really interested in or you're just kind of interested in? She's like, no, I'm really interested in it. Then you go, oh, that's fucking great. It's not great. Why is it great? <laughs> no, really, why is it great? There's no reason behind it. But, when she said, you know, because I was talking to a girl the other day, I was walking on the street. Oh, she was so, she was powering down the street. I was like, the confidence she had, I was like, I'm going. I don't, I'm going. So I walked up to her and I just touched her and I was looking at her like this and she just like started smiling. I didn't say anything. And for like three seconds, I was just smiling. She's like, what? What? And we started talking and she told me she was listening to Kendra Lamar. Kendra Lamar. And she said that Kendra Lamar make her feel like she's, she can be true to her roots. That's what she said. And I said, uh, no, no, no. She was saying she listened to Kendrick Lamar, and he's true to his roots. And I said, I said something like, why is that important for you, though? And she went, well, because I feel like I can be true to my roots when, he, when, when, when I'm listening to him. In a moment, I just was quiet. And then she's like, well, you know, um, I feel like I can be more true. You know, I'm not famous like Kendrick Lamar. I mean, soon I will be famous. And she, she did that. And I just kept letting her go on. In the space itself, that's even letting her know that that's even giving her appreciation for the fact that I'm wanting you to express yourself. I can verbalize it. I can. Because then I let her know something. Because then I went, ah, so that means that Kendrick Lamar reminds you of yourself. And she said, yeah. Then after that, she said, Oh, it was after that she said I'm famous. Then I went, oh, okay, that's the resonance. The resonance is he makes you feel more like yourself. And she just went, dude, thank you. All it took was me just giving her extra time. But imagine if she was just like, yeah, I, I was listening to Kendrick Lamar, and he's true to his roots, and it makes me feel like I can be true to mine. And I just went, oh, that's fucking great. You know, people who are true to their roots, they really are the ones who are the shakers of the world. She'll be like, I guess that's how she'll feel. Because she didn't invest any of that for me to say that. But when she told me something and then I responded to it with appreciation, that's when she feels it. I responded to her. So whether it's just that qualification or storytelling, many of the things fall away when you're in the moment with the girl and you are just simply expressing yourself at the times that you want to express yourself. And when you don't have anything to say, allowing her to do that. It is a two-way street when you meet a woman. It's not you trying to hold the whole conversation. Stop doing that. Really. When you're in front of the girl, stop feeling like I have to hold the whole conversation. 
Like I gotta come up with all the topics. I gotta come up with all the questions. If I don't come up with the questions, then I'm gonna lose her attention. Let silence be there with you and the girl. If it's not there, it's not a real conversation. It's not. The conversation is fake. So that's the actual answer your question. I did learn these things, some of them, to like, of course, know what it means and like, oh, am I good at storytelling? Stuff like that. But I'm not. It, you, I mean, you watch my content. I don't walk around saying any of those things. Yeah, I don't say. I don't say qualification. I've never said qualification. Never. I just simply don't. I just it's appreciation. That's how it looks to me because I know that's what it is. I just work underneath the surface, and I feel like if you work underneath the surface, you will. These things will naturally come. Like what makes a great storyteller is somebody who has a great mix between total engagement and silence. What makes somebody a great conversation is somebody who has a great mix between total engagement and silence. Really. All right, so next question. I'm going to choose somebody who didn't ask one. Yeah. Over and over yeah. and over. You're going to just Valiant, bro. Like you said, you know what? I'm going to go for it. But that sounds like to me that you don't go for it often. Yeah, so Yeah, but then you're ba yeah, that's what I'm saying. You're basing everything off one fucking experience. So that's why I'm telling you that you need to get a volume of experiences simply because let me let me give you guys the rundown of like what's actually happening when you go meet a girl. There's a hundred percent of the girls in the world still there right now in this moment. But let's let's start breaking it down for you, okay? 50%, a, a, a large, I don't know if it's 50%, but a large percentage of those girls have a significant other. All right? Break it down. Immediately, that cuts you out that if, when you walk up to a girl, she'll have a boyfriend many other times. Now, let's cut it down to she will think that it's weird and there's no way that she's going to talk to you. Another percentage. Cut it down again. The girl talked to you. She gave you the number. She didn't text you back and will never. Okay? That's another percentage. Go down again. She texts you back, but she won't meet you for a date. She meets you for a date, but you never see her again. You go on a date. Things happen. Maybe you get her home. And now this is where the 50-50 happens. Some girls you'll have sex with and some you won't. But do you see how I just broke all of that down? Like, you have to go do a volume. You must talk to many girls because many, how many guys in here have talked to girls? And a lot of them, I mean, so many of them had boyfriends. That's, that's honestly, so many of them have boyfriends, honestly. Because that's just the way that society works. It's just most people just get a significant other. That's what it is. But that already tells you that if I walked up to three girls today and all three of them had a boyfriend, I had, I literally, I did three of them, but I actually didn't have a chance, so to speak. So you're not really giving yourself a chance. You went, I did three approaches today and I gave myself a chance. Fuck, they all had a boyfriend. I go, no. Yes, they all had a boyfriend, but what about the girls who didn't have a boyfriend? You can't even get to them because you haven't done enough. You need to do enough so you can get to the girls who are single. Really? And the ones who are single who are willing to meet you. So you do have a chance. Stop going with this attitude of little bit and I want so much back. Because that's unrealistic to let you guys know. It's unrealistic. It's I'm going to go out there and I'm going to continue this until I find the girls who will give me a, who will give me a chance to uh, go through the process, really. Yeah, you just keep, you continue, really. If you want to know what it is, you continue and continue and continue and continue. And through this process, you just talk to so many girls so you can get the ones who will give you a chance to be able to even express yourself, really. Because you can express yourself in the first time you meet them, but they don't really know you until they come on a date. But to, so to really get them on a date, you got to do enough to get girls even on dates. And from that position now, in many ways, it starts to go, okay, is it me now? Is it, you know, I'm not trying to take her home, then you can start to really move with it. But if you're not even giving yourself the chance to get to the date part, because you're just like, I'll just do it whenever, then you, then you have nothing to work with. You simply don't. But you see, when you really pour all your energy into part of a life, it can manifest. 
Because people, they really just give half. When you give half, you'll get half back. I remember being into doctrine and just giving half. I would go up to a girl half, be half there. I mean, like I would be scared, afraid to fully engage myself, fully go for it. Totally, totally afraid. At night was when it was the strongest. I would just like half to go up to pretty girls. I was afraid to get of the girls just saying no to me, honestly. I was afraid of even taking a girl home because I just wanted it to work out. I didn't try to take girls home. I didn't. Why didn't I try to take girls home? It's better to leave off at the number because I know it's solid. I got flaked on so many times while doing that. And through getting flaked on time and time, I just went, I don't care about the number. I promise I don't. I just don't care. Get the girl, not the number. That's when I did that. And I know you guys have seen that video from me. Yeah, that's what, that, that came from that. It came from me going out over and over and just constantly feeling like, fuck, man, I, why did that, we had this great, I mean, the interactions would be so great. Like, I'm telling you, like, I'll be talking to the girl and she, at night, I'm like, I know, okay, the other one's flake, but I know this one's going to see me. That's how I felt. <laughs> I'm like, all of them flake, but I know this one is going to see me. And then guess what? She never saw me again. And I, I remember feeling the pain of it the next day, just really feeling the pain of like, fuck, I can't see that girl again. i like, what? Did she forget that she, was, she wasn't drunk? Did she forget about me? Just feeling that. So it's, it's uh, pouring your energy into this part of your life. Finding a way. I used to travel, because I was in Madison, Wisconsin, I used to travel to Chicago like a few times in a month if I could to just go get, a, go get around more beautiful girls. Because I poured all my energy into this part of my life. And you're in a great position to do that, my man. You are. Like you have no more time to waste. You don't. If you feel like you know, you've know wasted all the time, you have no more time to waste. Allow this part of your life to be the most important thing to you, yourself in relation to women. And you'll start to learn a lot about yourself in relation to yourself through this as well. Yeah. If you if you see a girl and you feel like I'm a, I'm a, that girl's attractive to me, I don't. She doesn't have to be hot. Right. She doesn't have to be like really attractive. Yeah. If I'm attracted to that girl, I'll go because you get used to acting on that feeling of desire. And once you reinforce that, when I see a girl, I go. That'll happen continuously. Now you're building in yourself that I go for what I want because you're acting on that desire of want all the time. All right, continue to do that with any girl you talk to. I mean, any girl. Any girl you see, and I would say to just give you a number, I would say.